Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from Soft Unit Global, the software university. I'm here for the next lesson from this free Java Foundations course, which, as you already know, covers important concepts from Java programming, such as arrays, lists, maps, methods, strings, classes, objects, exceptions, and Java API classes, and prepares you for the Java Foundations official exam from Oracle. This is an extra lesson in the course, in which I explain the, and demonstrate with live code examples the concepts of JDK, GRE, JVM, the common twine compilation tools in Java, the Java compiler, Java C, uh, class files, and JAR archives, and the concept of class path and how to deal with all these technologies and tools. I'll start with the design concepts behind the Java language and the Java platform. Next, I'll explain the concepts of JDK, Java Development Toolkit, and its components, JVM, compiler, runtime environment, modules, and APIs. Finally, I will demonstrate how to use the Java common twine compiler, Java C, and how to compile a Java source code, for example, hello.java, to a Java bytecode, uh, for example, hello.class, and how to execute the class file with uh, Java hello common twine, uh, and that's all. Let's start. In this section, I will talk about the Java programming language and the Java platform. So let's start uh, from the concept of programming languages. Programming languages define a set of rules, some kind of syntax to write programs. Uh, and languages could be either compiled, like Java, C Sharp, C++, Go, and others, or interpreted like JavaScript, Python, uh, and some other scripting languages. So the compiler-based languages use compiler, which translates the programming code into machine code, into the code which your CPU, the computing processor in your hardware, on your laptop, uh, is directly can execute. During the compilation, uh, the syntax errors are found and you'll get an error message. The interpreter executes the code line by line. It doesn't uh, compile the code before the, the execution, and it just reads one command, executed, it reads another command, executed, and it finds syntax errors at runtime. So if you have errors in the code in JavaScript, you will not mm, find these errors until the code is executed. So Java is compiler-based language. It is compiled language. It transforms your Java code into the so-called Python code, compiled Java code or class file. And later this code is executed by the Java virtual machine as I will explain in bigger details a bit later. So Java, it is a very popular, very uh, highly used, programming languages. Uh, it's a language which is very, very, very uh, popular in the programming and the software development landscape. And in uh, basically, it's a syntax to write computer programs. It's object-oriented, which means that it's based on classes and methods and properties and things like that. And it's statically typed, which means that variables have a fixed type which cannot be changed at runtime. And it's similar to C Sharp, but most people believe that C Sharp is better, but it's another story. So uh, Java is easy to learn language, easy to read language, and easy to understand language. So you don't need to know so much in order to read a Java program. Uh, it is designed for uh, people who don't need much time to start writing code. It's designed to be easy, but many languages are like this. Java is not only a language. You should remember that Java is a platform. It's a platform which uh, has several versions and it basically can compile and execute Java or other languages code into a, the Java virtual machine, JVM, 
It runs on millions of devices and on many uh, operating systems such as Android, it can run on or iPhone, it can run on Mac, on, on Linux and Windows. And it it's a development platform, which means that it's a language, it's a set of tools, a set of libraries, of APIs, of programming models and others. Uh, the Java development platform uh, has uh, many versions like the Java SE, Java Standard Edition, which is the typical Java, Java Enterprise Edition, which is for, for the server-side uh, development uh, backend. Uh, development uh, environment and Android, which is for mobile phones, JavaFX, which is for uh, desktop apps for user interfaces, and Micro Edition, which is for uh, embedded devices. So, Java is a modern general purpose programming language. General purpose means that you can use it for web apps, for mobile apps, for server side apps, for, for many different apps. Because there are uh, specific languages such as CQL, which is only used for databases. But Java is a general purpose language, which means that you can uh, make most of the apps, cloud apps, mobile apps, games, backend apps, web apps, and uh, many others. So the next uh, important thing is that Java is object-oriented, which means that Java programs consist of classes which hold methods. Methods hold your code and methods invoke from each other. And Java classes compose your program and they can inherit from each other and benefit from all the uh, interesting and uh, features of the object-oriented uh, paradigm. So Java is also statically typed language, which means that variables have a type which is declared at compile time and cannot be changed at runtime, which basically means that if you have uh, int a equals five, then you can say a equals to um, hello, because uh, the type of a will be int and it cannot be changed to string at runtime. The Java code is portable, which means that you can compile your code in Linux and run it on Macs, or you can compile in Windows and run on Android. So this means that the code is portable, which is not always the case. For example, if you compile a C++ in Windows, it cannot run in Linux. Java is robust, which means that it's a reliable environment. Uh, it's an uh, environment which is stable, which cannot crash uh, for no reason, like sometimes it happens in C or C++ due to some hidden errors. And it is safe from many types of errors, for example, errors based on pointers. Uh, it is garbage collector based, which means that the memory is automatically managed for you. And it is uh, the error handling is based on exception. So the design of Java is to be a easy to write and reliable, stable system. And it's proven that it is really robust and reliable because millions of um, apps and uh, so mostly server side uh, heavy systems in the banking, in the finance, and uh, in the business run Java and it does its job very well. They, they have stable systems which don't crash and which uh, are uh, predictably stable. So Java has many advantages. One of them is that it's a good choice for beginners. Why? Because it's easy, it's easy to learn, it's, uh, it has very big community, it has a lot of resources like book tutorials, uh, courses, etc. Easy syntax. There are no complex uh, things like, for example, in the Perl programming language, you use uh, all this percentage, tower, ampersand, uh, add symbol, and many others. And Java is mostly text based. It's easy to use, uh, to read, and easy to learn. You have a lot of resources like books, tutorials, courses, uh, forums, uh, chats, etc. And it has really big developer community with many jobs. For example, you can uh, take uh, this 
into consideration. Uh, currently, we have 2.2 million open jobs for Java developers. 2.2 millions. This is not 2,000, two this is 2, two millions. Which means that if you learn Java, your chance to start a job is very, very, very big. Unlike some other languages. And also, if you open Stack Overflow, which is one of the biggest uh, question answer based uh, forum or discussion board for programmers, for developers, it has 1.8 million of questions uh, which are already answered about Java. Which means that if you have some question, if you have some problem, if you have, uh, if you need something, you will find it, which is not true with all the languages. For example, if you write in in some uh, specific uh, or new language, uh, which is not quite popular, um, for example, the language D, for example, you have language C, C++, and you have D, and the language D does not have so much jobs does not have so much uh, com big community, etc., 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 and you will be alone. So Java has, of course, some disadvantages. Uh, one of the biggest disadvantage that most people talk about are that it is too verbose, which basically means that you need to write too much code to get so little done. Which means that in some languages. Uh, your program could be shorter and more clear. For example, Python is less verbose. In Python, you write less code to do much work. In Java, you write more code to do less work. That's why. So most Java APIs are complex because they are oriented to enterprises, to big companies and corporations, and they are verbose to use, which means that you need to write, for example, five uh, lines of code instead of one, 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 one line of code like it could be in Python or JavaScript. This is mostly due to the heavy design patterns used uh, in the Java APIs, but uh, this is partially true. So there are some libraries which overcome this. And the, the Java syntax is sometimes verbose. For example, if you want to define a class holding few uh, members uh, with accessors, getters, and setters, you can do this very shortly in Kotlin or in Python and with less code or even in Scala and JS. And in Java, you will write a lot of code, which is mostly uh, generated, but but still, it's a lot of code. So Kotlin is a smarter version of Java, where you write less code. Scala is another uh, Java-based language. Uh, what I mean by that Kotlin and Java are Java-based languages, they run in the Java virtual machine. They are compatible with Java. They, you can mix Java and Kotlin. Uh, in the same project, even in the same, uh, but they are different syntax for the same uh, platform. So, Kotlin and Scala are Java alternatives, uh, which run in the Java ecosystem in the Java platform. Python and JavaScript are quite different platforms, and uh, they also use less code. So there is a solution. Uh, another bad uh, thing in the Java design is that they don't have well-designed generics, which means that you cannot have a list of integers. Uh, and you, uh, when you have list or set or other data structure, you always need to deal with objects instead of primitive types. And this causes uh, many uh, headaches and uh, many unpleasant uh, effects, which you can learn in the generics uh, lesson from this course. Java has some performance issues, uh, but this is not much important for most cases. Uh, it depends on what kind of software you write, but basically uh, Java uses more memory and more CPU than more efficient languages like C++, like Rust, like Co and other and others which are uh, optimized for performance. But 
Java is more easy than C++. If you want to learn C++, you will need two, three, five years. If you want to learn Java, you can learn it for a few months and have similar efficiency in writing code and quality. So Java is high level programming language. It does not support low level programming paradise paradigms such as pointers directly uh, dealing with the CPU register, directly dealing with the CPU instructions, directly dealing with uh, the memory and changing the memory uh, at, at low level. This is not supported in Java and that's why Java is easier. So there are benefits, advantages and disadvantages and Java is for high level developers who want to uh, write code with less effort and who want to uh, write uh, higher level programs such as business apps. So let's talk about the Java platform. As I already explained, there is a big difference between the Java language, which is a syntax to write programming code, and the Java platform, which is an environment for execution of Java code. It is a, a kind of ecosystem, it's, it's a kind of uh, um, set of software tools uh, together with concepts, APIs and others. Uh, and the Java platform, uh, first, it holds an environment for execution of Java code, which is called the Java Virtual Machine. And this Java code, when it is compiled, it is called bytecode. And the bytecode is not directly executed by the CPU, by your laptop's processor, uh, but it is uh, executed through this Java virtual machine, which uh, makes additional compilation for the uh, execution at the CPU. The Java platform consists of the Java programming language and sometimes some alternatives like Kotlin and Scala. And it holds a powerful class library, which is very powerful. This is called the Java API. Uh, it has collection classes, regular expressions classes, classes to access databases, classes for multimedia, and, and many other libraries and uh, additional functions, which are bundles into Java API. And it defines a programming model, which means that it tells you how to structure your code, how to um, create, uh, for example, modules, char archives, uh, how to handle exceptions, how to deal with object-oriented programming and many others. This is called programming model. Different platforms have different programming models. For example, the programming model in JavaScript is quite different that, than in Java. JavaScript is mostly asynchronous and Java is mostly synchronous, for example. So the Java platforms provide the ability to run Java programs on any machine which supports the JVM, which may be Windows uh, laptop or uh, Linux server or uh, Mac OS uh, based device, uh, for example, some tablet or, um, or iOS device like tablets or smartphones, Android devices like uh, tablets and phones, and you can run Java on your TV, on your car, on your uh, refrigerator, on your air conditioner, etc., etc., etc. So Java can run on any machine because there are different kinds of JVMs and profiles for these uh, platforms, and the platform itself has the so-called editions. Editions means that it's a kind of version or adoption of the Java platform for a specific purpose. For example, Java SE is what we learn. This is the standard Java language with its APIs. But Java EE Enterprise Edition is for corporate, for enterprise application development, Java Enterprise Edition. It deals with um, application servers, with business logic, with XML web services, with REST APIs. It deals with data databases and persistence. It uh, deals with cryptography. It deals with business process management and many, many, many other specifications. And this is so big that m most people never learn this in their life. 
they only learn portions of it and it, it will take you five to ten years to learn the fully Java enter the Java enterprise platform. Uh, Android is another uh, platform where uh, it's another adoption of the Java platform, which is for mobile devices, for the Android devices, and it's a different version of Java. It's still the Java language or the Kotlin language. It still has uh, some basic you know, class libraries. It still uses the same programming model, uh, but some APIs are different, some classes are different, some libraries are different, etc. Java Micro Edition, Java Card, and Java Embedded are for embedded devices. They are smaller, smaller versions of Java, which run uh, on uh, devices which has less resources, such as microcontroller, which uh, runs inside your refrigerator, or, for example, um, in your um, car audio player, you may have a Java Micro Edition or Java card is even smaller for smart cards. Okay, let's continue with the next topic about JDK and GRE. I will talk about the Java Development Kit, JDK, and Java Runtime Envi Environment, JRE, which is a kind of old-fashioned technology which is slowly uh, stepping down uh, and I'll explain a little bit more uh, later. So, JDK is short for Java Development Toolkit or Java SDK, Java Software Development Toolkit. G Development Toolkit is a set of uh, platform, compilers, tools, and others. So, JDK provides tool sets for Java developers. And for example, if you have Python SDK, it will provide tools for Python developers. If you have Android SDK, it will provide tool set for uh, Android developers, etc. Et so th this is a concept in software development that you developers you you use tool sets, tool kits. Uh, so JDK includes the virtual machine, the environment which can run the compiled Java code. Also, the Java compiler, Java C, and other developer tools like Chip Package, which can make executable code out from your code. For example, make a Windows .exe file uh, from your Java program, or JLink, which can package a subset of the Java platform, uh, which is needed to run your code. Jar, which deals with Java archives. Java doc which generates Java documentation, JS console which monitors the, the Java processes and what happens inside them and many others. So JDK and JRE are taken from either from Oracle which is the official Java vendor, this is the Oracle and you can download for example for Windows this installer or for Mac another installer and uh, but you can also uh, take another version because Java is open source and many companies and organizations adopt this Java code uh, into their products. So uh, this Adoptium provides another version of Java, which is, comes from the Eclipse Temurin project. And you can download this uh, JDK 17. I will use in my lessons the official Java uh, binaries from Oracle, and this is recommended in when you are a beginner because it's more massively adopted. But there are lots of Java and JDK versions uh, because again, this is an open source project and. Uh, any company can take it, change it, and release it. Uh, so, JDK should not be confused with GRE. GRE is the runtime environment for Java, and JDK is uh, a tool set for developers. For example, the GRE does not have a compiler, because GRE runs existing Java programs. For example, if you, if you play a game which is based on Java, 
uh, it will use a kind of GRE or some uh, binary package packaged with the J package or with JLink. And it will not have a compiler because game players don't need a compiler. They don't need, they need only the executable, the runtime files. So JDK is designed for developers. You as developer should install JDK to develop Java programs. And of course, some kind of ID such as IntelliJ IDEA or Eclipse. GRE, Java Runtime Environment, is designed for the end users to run Java apps. Or at least this war in the past, because GRE is now retiring uh, as from Java 11, and it is replaced with some uh, another model called JPackage to package and distribute the, mm, the required modules and uh, runtime components to run your Java code. So JDK consists of the Java Virtual Machine plus standard libraries and APIs plus the compiler or so-called Java C .exe, for example, in Windows, plus some tools like char, Java Doc, JPackage, JLink, JConsole, and many others. And the typical location of the JDK uh, is uh, in Windows, in C, program files, Java, and JDK, for example, and the, the version. Uh, this location could be different, of course, in Linux it can be, um, depends on the distribution, uh, but it's a different place in the file system, but basically this is the JDK. Jury consists of JVM plus API classes and libraries, but it doesn't have compilers and other tools because they are not needed to the end user. Jury is designed for the end user and it is a subset of JDK. It is a smaller version of the Java platform, which is only able to execute Java programs and it doesn't um, allow development of new Java software. So it Jerry is replaced with this J package and JLink tools uh, starting from Java 11. So if someone talks you about GRE, uh, have in mind that this is a kind of retiring technology and uh, it was actual and recent with Java 8, version 8, but with Java 11 or 17 or later, it's not quite accurate. So how we download and install JDK? We download and install JDK uh, from Oracle uh, you can find this in, in, in Google and you choose the platform and you take the executable. Uh, after that, you, you just follow the installer. Next, choose target folder or directory, uh, choose some language and other settings and finally you install it. After you install it, you should check whether your installation works correctly. How you do this? You uh, make start and you run the Windows terminal, for example, or if you use some uh, older version of Windows or um, other environment, you can use this command prompt. But basically, this is a place where you write commands. And one of these commands is Java. If you have Java, it will print something like this. If Java is not correctly installed, you will have some error like this one. The Java is not recognized. Now I have mistake, of course, but just only to demonstrate. To see the version of Java, you uh, write Java hyphen hyphen version. And it tells you that your version of the Java runtime environment the is version 17 that it tells you also that the uh, hotspot virtual machine this is the type of virtual machine but you have java 17.01 here released in uh, in october 2021 and you should also check whether you have or not java c this is the compiler because if you have only Java, 
this means that you have a runtime to run Java programs. If you have Java C, this means that you have you can compile Java programs. You can be developer. Java C with the version uh, arguments shows you the version of Java. So I have a Java compiler version 7001. Sometimes uh, you may have installed Java, but uh, your you cannot find uh, these comments working in your command prompt or your terminal. Why? Because they are not set in the system path. I will show you the system path. So if you type an environment and you edit from your control panel in Windows or from other place in other operating systems and you choose environment variables and you have here path, path, and you can double click the path and you have many elements of this path. The path is a place where binaries, binary uh, tools, uh, programs and others are uh, located and searched when you type them. For example, if I install, for example, some uh, new tool code, for example, hello. If I print hello here, the Windows, the operating system and the, the environment behind this command prompt here uh, will traverse all these paths for binaries to, to find a command, a command, your command. For example, uh, I have installed Git and I have this in my path. That's why I can use Git. And I have Git, but I don't have, for example, uh, SVN. Oh, I have it. But for example, I don't have uh, Git 2. Why? Because there is no such command here in this path. So the binaries of Java are located here. I can open this in Windows Explorer. Control V. I paste it. And these are the commands, for example, jshell or jpackage or uh, k2 or some others uh, like uh, java c or java or uh, java doc and many others or char. So this should be in your path in order to be able to use everything from the command line. Uh, so java with hyphen 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 version and Java C with hyphen hyphen version. If both this work and give you meaningful Java version, not Java 5, uh, but later, uh, this means that you have installed Java. You may have several Java versions in the same time running side by side, and the path will determine whether you have uh, which one will execute. So to edit, I, I have shown in these uh, slides how you can edit this Java path. Okay, the next topic is about using Java and Java C common twin uh, tools to compile and execute Java programs. So how to deal with the Java compilation process and execution? Remember that Java is a high level language. It is compiler based language, it is compiled language. And a program which is written in Java consists of Java source code, which is Java uh, coding lines uh, written in some Java file, for example, in hello.java. The class files are generated by the compiler uh, during the compilation process. And they are independent of the machine and the operating system, which means that you can compile your Java programs into a char or hive or uh, class files and you can copy these files or these binaries into another uh, computer through the internet or using a USB stick and they will run on this other computer. So you can compile in Windows and run in Linux or run in Mac or in Android or iOS. 
So the concept is that you have a Java source code. You use the compiler to get compiled Java code, to get the class file. And finally, you execute the compiled Java program uh, using this Java virtual machine. And this compiler here is called Java C. And this execution engine here is called Java, just Java. I will show you this in a live example. So if we have this source code, hello.java, and we compile this through Java C, uh, we'll get a binary bytecode. This is the execution. This is how your Android apps looks, for example, on your mobile phone, how games look. They are binaries. They are just numbers, uh, hex numbers. And there is, of course, a specific format for this, which is machine readable by the Java virtual machine. But basically, this is how it works. And the Java virtual machine loads these class files and executes the commands written in them by the developers. So I will demonstrate you how this works. I will create a, uh, uh, a file with Notepad and we will do something. First, I will start the Windows terminal or the common command prompt. Okay. This is where I am. Uh, I'll start it again because I had a previous version. So uh, this is a place where I can write commands, for example, here, which lists all the current folders, etc. One of these commands is notepad. In Windows, this is a text editor. In Linux, it could be VI or MC, uh, MC Edit or some, some other. Uh, so I'll create a file called hello.java in the my home directory, C users Nakov. So notepad hello Java will create a new file called hello.java. Okay. And here I can define a public class. Hello, and inside this public class hello, I'll have a public, let's increase the font, static void main of string array args, and, and inside this, I will do something like system.out.println of hello. Java, for example. Okay, I save this, save, and I go back to the terminal here. This is another one. And if I say dir, I'll see this hello.java, which is 110 bytes, which I already created. Okay, and now I can say Java compiler hello.java or ju I just put the first two letters and press tab and this is autocomplete and it's compiled if I run here I will see that I have two classes here uh, the source code java.hello.java and hello.class if I open with node path hello.class you will see that this is a binary and human unreadable, partially readable file. So strings are readable, but the other uh, things look ugly. And this is not designed for humans. This is designed for machines. So if I use Java, hello.class, hello nothing will happen because .class is uh, assumed by default and you should only uh, type the name of the class and it will be loaded from the current folder, from the current directory. So this is the result from my program. What I did, I wrote a Java program using the notepad text editor. Later I compiled this and uh, I, I mm, obtained the, the hello.class by Java bytecode and then I used this Java command 
to run or execute this code locally. Notepad, write the code, Java C, Java, and that's all. I need to mention the so-called class files. Files which have this ending dot class, like this one. Uh, sorry, like this one. I can use type hello.class to display the content of this file. So these class files basically hold a compiled Java code, binary executable. Uh, it could be also Kotlin uh, code or uh, Scala code or other JVM Java based uh, language. Uh, Kotlin and Java compile to the same output, class file. And even these class files can be decompiled back to Java, which is not always works, but works in most cases. And you lose your variable names and some other details from your code. But basically, class files can be decompiled back. Uh, the class files hold Java bytecode plus metadata. Metadata which says, okay, I have this class, it has these methods, uh, I have another class, I, it implements this interface, things like that. This is called metadata, data about the data. Um, and usually multiple class files are packaged into jar archives. Jar archives uh, hold several, uh, several classes together if you have a multi-file app, which is in most cases. So the char archives or the char files hold set of classes and they are just cheap zip archives. The zip, zip is the mostly used uh, compression file archivator. So jar archives hold a set of classes and resources, like for example, images or fonts, and they look like the assemblies in .NET Core. We, we, they are DLL files in, in C Sharp and they are char files in Java. So char files have a, are zip archives with files and a special manifest, which is a metadata XML. I could create with the char tool, char, uh, I, but I'm not, sure hi, how to use this this uh, star dot was uh, java jar c uh, hello or i should use the, the folder maybe here huh okay uh i should check how to use the jar but basically, you can see some jar files here uh, from this place. Okay, and uh, this is my Java installation. So I can show you uh, some in the lib. There maybe will be some jars. So jar files can be open with 7-zip or some archive and you can see what's inside inside they are meta inf with this manifest which holds some meta, met, metadata and some other files and also there are some classes these are the class files and for example if i have image reader which has subclasses inside it the output will be something like this. So if you compile one class holding one Java source code file holding several classes, the output will be something like this. All these files come from a single Java source code file. But this is uh, just an example how the jar files look like. And inside the jar, uh, the, the jar, there are class files which hold compiled Java code. So these are the internals of Java class files and jar archives. I should mention here the concept of class path. Class path is a list of directories and jar archives 
holding your applications classes and resources which are needed by your application at runtime. Resources are images, icons, sounds, and many other files. And your classes are the binary compiled programs. When uh, the JVM loads a class or resource, it traverses the class, the class path uh, to find the requested files or classes. So this is how to demonstrate this. I will uh, go at the top folder at my root directory on my hard disk and I can say Java and run the class hello and it says I cannot find this class hello because my class file uh, class path does not hold it but if I say Java uh, dash class path and I say uh, C users Nakov, where is my hello.class? And I say, please load and execute the hello class, it will run. Because I added into this class path this folder. I can even add many other folders, like C, for example, program files, uh, etc. Some other folder and all these folders will be traversed to find this class or its dependencies. There is another concept, module path, because modern Java uses modules. I'll show you. Uh, there are modules uh, here, chain mods, which are these files, chain mod. For example, java.sql.j mode. I'm not sure that they are zip compatible. Oh, they are. And they, they are similar to char files, but depends. So these Java modules are uh, compiled libraries, or they are called modules, uh, which you can use in your, um, in your app. So Java base is the basic module, Java desktop are the swing module, XML are for XML, parsers, compiler tools, and many others. But this is the concept of modules, is that modules are something like char archives, but they have some slightly different architecture, and they may have dependencies. One module can depend on others, and when you want to use one module, you will automatically reference its dependencies as well. So one or more directories could contain Java modules and you may have this module path. And when loading a class or resource from a Java module, the JVM will traverse this Java module path to find the requested module. This is the concept. So it's time to go ahead with the exercises. It's your turn to write code. Please don't skip the exercises because they are the only way you can learn uh, by practicing all the exercises which I have prepared for this lesson, write the code and compile and run your programs to gain practical experience. It's important, not, not just listening. Listening videos cannot uh, train your skills. It will give you only knowledge. So the program that you need to uh, solve here is very easy to read to numbers and sum, sum them, but I want you to install the Java JDK and compilers if you don't have it and to run it. So you can create a folder, you can go to this folder, for example, the folder named examples or projects. You go there uh, and if you run the command uh, dir, uh, you, it will list the, your files. You can create uh, a file called some numbers.java, then you should compile it and then after the compilation you can check the results the results will be this file and finally you can run it and put something so if i have this this code java console belt based compilation i can java c and java uh, compile it so i can go in this examples folder with this command 
and I can check what's inside. I will delete this some numbers dot class. Uh, and now I have this. If I type it, you'll see that I have this code already. This is the solution of my problem. And if I say Java C some numbers dot Java, it will be compiled. If I press Java some numbers without dot class, I use the tabulation tab for out complete. Uh, I can enter, for example, 14, 35, and the result will be 75. So it works. This is your exercise. So do it to get some real world experience. Learn by doing, do your exercises because they are the most important activity when you learn coding and software engineering. I uh, want you to develop skills, not, not just knowledge. Okay, that was my lesson for uh, today and I hope you enjoyed and you learned more and it will be very helpful all this information if you go to certification exams because they often ask about the Java language, the JDK and others. Remember to learn by doing because this is the only way you can learn uh, practical skills by writing code a lot of code every day, so keep on coding, write code, solve exercises, create projects to gain practical experience. Did you like this code lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softuni.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on computer programming and software engineering. Get free access to the practical exercises and the automated JIT system for this code lesson. Get free help for mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free, so join now, softuni.org. Also, check out my other videos from the Code Lesson series to learn coding through video tutorials and hands-on exercises. Type in the comments below what topic you would like to see next. See you next time in my next video. Goodbye.